WIM syndrome is caused by mutations in a, a gene called CXCR4 and there are 11 mutations that have been identified in that gene that cause WIM syndrome. Uh, not every patient that has WIM syndrome has a mutation in CXCR4, but uh, the great majority do. So if there were a patient who had the acronymic features of the disease, the W, the H, the I, the M, the natural next step would be to look for a mutation in that gene CXCR4. Uh, you can actually short, shortcut the whole process. If you had a patient who had uh, where the index of suspicion was high, so a patient who maybe had a family history or presented with warts and recurrent infections, you may just jump right to the chase and do an analysis of CXCR4. If there's a, is a, if there's a mutation, then the, the, you'd be pretty confident about the diagnosis at that point. We, uh, we do genetic testing on as many family members as we can. Uh, and what we found is that there's a lot of uh, diversity in the presentation of the patients. So we, for instance, we have one family in which uh, three generations have the same mutation. And the grandmother has no clinical manifestations, no warts, no history of recurrent infections. The mother has no warts and some, a history of some mild infections, and two children are highly affected. They have both warts and uh, severe recurrent infections. So there's an example, same mutation within the same family, same types of exposures, but very different uh, clinical outcomes. And that raises questions about how to explain that, and uh, one possibility is that there are modifying mutations in other genes that have not been identified yet, or uh, different exposures and environmental factors that may, may affect the outcome. The pa patients can take years to decades to get a diagnosis, and uh, it's because <clears throat> generally the patients don't get life-threatening infections, so very few WIM patients end up in an ICU. Uh, very few of them are hospitalized because of their infections. Very few of them need intravenous antibiotics for their infections. Uh, but usually they'll, uh, they'll, they'll come to a doctor and in, after, a, after an office visit be given an antibiotic. And they'll typically get better uh, pretty quickly. The infections don't disseminate, so they tend to be uh, local surface infections, so usually in the airways and, and the skin. Uh, those are the most common sites. But they, there are many things that they don't get. They don't get invasive abscesses like a liver abscess or a brain abscess, um, very, very uncommon. Meningitis is uncommon. They don't get, typically get sepsis, um, uh, bloodstream infections. Uh, so uh, those, are, those are the more serious infections that would be more alarming to a, to a, to a physician. Um, and it, it takes a lot of these more, these milder types of infections to sort of accumulate before a pattern develops where the doctor says there seems to be something wrong here because you're, you're getting too many of these things. Let's investigate and find out why.